Welcome to Lightroom Live. We are excited you're here. And we are <laughs> super excited about the new Lightrooms. There's two products now. And we've got a lot of things to talk about. We've already got a lot of questions coming in. And we are glad you're here. If you are here with me and my pal, Rob Sylvan. Hello, Rob. Hey, Levi. Good to see you, even though I just saw you uh, the right. last few days. So good to see Rob, you again. Rob and I have been at the Photo Plus Expo in New York City. Uh, we had a fun time helping people there, as well as doing a fun photo walk. That was a good photo walk, yeah. Good one. Um, yeah, it's always fun to walk around New York with a bunch of photographers and, uh, and just always a good time. It's Absolutely. No, no shortage of things to take pictures of, and uh, it was a nice night. Actually, all, sure. the whole time, until we left, it was really, really nice. Yeah, we had, we had great weather. Yeah. So, and, uh, yeah, so what I was there for was I was hanging out in the Adobe Theater uh, right in the front there. Just the, the, there was a – someone had the thought that maybe there would be questions. <laughs> be like this stuff. So I was – Rob. There were. There were a few questions. Rob had a continuous line of people <laughs> for three days. Yeah. Um, yeah, I don't think I've talked that much uh, continuously in a long time. So, right. Uh, so it was, it was good to have a five-hour bus ride where I just kind of curled up into a fetal position <laughs> and just did not talk to anybody. Perfect. But yeah. yeah so, so you're back home in New Hampshire? I'm back home, yes. Back Excellent. home and uh, got two dogs behind me here trying to get my attention at the moment. But right on. We'll, uh, we'll lay down pen. Um, but yeah, so I'm ready to talk Lightroom. So Right on. Yes, and so if you are joining us, we are here, or we are glad you are here. Yeah, if so you would guess. like to leave a question, you need to come over to the YouTube page. If you're watching yes. on Photo Focus, you need to click on a little button that says YouTube in the bottom right corner of your video viewer, and that will bring you over to YouTube where you can leave a question on the right-hand side of the video. And we are watching those. Uh, we'd love to have your questions. And just simply leaving a comment also enters you in our drawing for a complimentary copy of Perfectly Clear version 3. And then they just did a release the other day, a new release. So there's new features, and it's a cool tool. We're going to have to cover that again here soon also. Yeah. Um, there is a lot of, you know, being a Photo Plus, there was a lot of new things that were coming yes. out all over the place. So not just Lightroom stuff. It was... It was really hard to keep up <laughs> with right. all the new stuff that was coming out. Right. There's new, new products, new software, um, new names for so like our one of our favorites, the Mac Fun stuff. Yeah. It is now called Skylum because they're not just for Mac users anymore. Uh, they're for for all platforms, and so the Skylum team produced some new stuff. Also, um, I got this cool tool. This thing is called Narbox, and it's a hard drive. That has a battery in it, so you can you can power it off site. Like you can you can be on the side of a mountain and back up your photographs, and even then broadcast them in any format from here to your mobile de device to your phone. Cool. Um, I can do that from my camera, but this <laughs> allows me to broadcast my raw photos, so I could use them in Lightroom Mobile and get full raw editing uh, straight out of out of camera and on my phone too. It's, it's a cool tool. I'll, I'll be sharing more about that coming up. Yeah. Nice. So. All right. So should we kind of jump in just like big picture? I think we start should. there. All right. And then I see there's already questions forming and, uh, yes. and this may, you know, touch on some of them, but we'll, we'll definitely cycle through <laughs> Declan. So are we <laughs> yeah. doomed? All right. So good ones. David Morrison, Alberta. Hey Monty. What's up, man? Uh, Thomas. Got Richard tuning in. We got Jessica was on like 15 minutes before we even kicked off. So yeah, she's um, ready. So we'll try to get yeah. to her question uh, first. Rachel's in there. Excellent. <laughs> um, so on October 18th, uh, which was two weeks ago, Adobe Max, right? Um, yeah. Uh, we haven't had a new version of Lightroom really since over almost three years uh, mm -hmm. since since Lightroom. So. I'm going to be super pedantic and giving like these really big names of this product to try okay. uh, with the intention of being clear, not not just to be uh, nutty. All right. So uh, way back when in 2015, I guess uh, we had Lightroom, 
which was then it was called the full name, like when you're in trouble, full name, uh, Adobe Photoshop Lightroom CC 2015 uh, was released. At the same time, Lightroom 6 was released. And Lightroom 6 and Lightroom CC 2015 are essentially the same product in terms of functionality, with a few minor exceptions. We yeah, touch yeah, on, but, you know, it's more, they're essentially the same in terms of camera support and, and basic mm -hmm. core functionality. They're the same. The difference uh, really is that Lightroom 6 is what's called a perpetual license, meaning you pay once and you are paying for a license to use that product uh, until your operating system no longer supports it, basically. Um, and that's true probably of most of the software licenses that we purchase. Uh, we don't purchase the software, we purchase a license to use it. That thing that we click agree and we don't actually read, that's the, you know, telling us that we're agreeing to that license. Um, with the Creative Cloud, uh, with the CC 2015, the, the difference there is that we're paying a monthly or annual fee for that license instead of paying one price for that license. And um, there's definitely a philosophical divide uh, under over who prefers which type of licensing uh, arrangement. Uh, and I could certainly ask answer questions about it. And I, you know, what's better is really up to you. It's definitely a personal you know preference, I think. Um, so flash forward to like say let's say like the beginning of October. All right, we still were running the those same two versions of Lightroom CC 2015 and Lightroom 6. We're still chugging along. At that point, they had been updated 12 times. We had uh, Lightroom 6.12 was out, and uh, Photoshop CC 2015.12 was out. All right, so then Adobe Max comes along, and uh, big announcements dropped that day in that there was finally a new version of, uh, of Lightroom that updated from CC 2015 and from Lightroom 6, the next kind of transition, the path, the upgrade path from those products. And, and this is where it gets confusing. So that new product, the upgrade from CC 2015 and Lightroom 6 is called Lightroom Classic, all right? So if you think of Lightroom CC 2015, Lightroom 6 is version six of Lightroom. Lightroom Classic is essentially version seven. We're not calling it that, but that's what it is, okay? In terms of if you've been using any version of Lightroom uh, prior, to, you know, prior to Adobe Max, you're a Lightroom user, and, and Lightroom Classic is the product for you, uh, I'm gonna guess, all right? If you have your photos stored on folders, on a, an internal drive, on an external drive, on a network drive, and you're managing that folder-based system, uh, Lightroom Classic is, is the product for you, all right? And in terms of new features in Lightroom Classic, we'll, we'll get to, one of them is called uh, Range Mask, all right? And that um, is pretty cool. It's really uh, an addition to the local adjustment tools. So it's not like a separate panel, per se, or a separate module or anything like that. It's just incorporated into the local adjustment tools. Then the rest of all the new features in Classic really had something to do with improving performance. Because if you have been using Lightroom up to this point, you probably uh, encountered some performance issues. And, and possibly you uh, wrote into Adobe <laughs> about it. So they apparently heard that. Uh, that claim, that, that cry uh, for improvement in performance. And so really features one through four were really all about um, improving that performance. So we'll, we'll touch on, on, on some of those. So that being said, I know that some people aren't experiencing best performance in, in Classic, and we can kind of touch on that. And uh, that's unfortunately not surprising when a you know, new version comes out, there's still some things to, to address, and hopefully they're working on addressing those. So, but the intention, the intention behind it is to improve performance and bring a new feature. All right, and so, yeah, if that's all that happened, and now they just called it Lightroom Classic, we kind of go, okay, whatever, and we move on. But, but that's, also, not all. That's, <laughs> that's not all. all. That that's not all. Uh, on that same day, in that same announcement, um, there's a new product that is, uh, can exist on Windows and Mac platform. That's where it gets kind of kooky, right? So a new product for, I hate using this word, the, the desktop, because I'm sitting here in front of a laptop and a, and a tablet that are both computers that run, one runs Windows and one runs Mac, so neither is a desktop. But um, so this new product is now called Lightroom. For the less mobile device. CC, right? Yes. So this new Lightroom CC, um, is the way I think of it is they took what was 
previously called Lightroom Mobile if you had an Android or iOS device. And they kind of ported that interface, or that functionality, uh, to the Windows and Mac platform. All right? So now you can have essentially uh, an interface to that, to that cloud storage um, in an app that looks really very much like what you would have on your iOS, on your tablet, on your iPad, on your iPhone, you know, whatever device, mobile device you might have been using. So, so there's Lightroom Classic and Lightroom CC. And that's how I've kind of evolved into referring to the two. All right, so Lightroom Classic is for anyone who's really been using Lightroom prior to Adobe Max. Is Classic is going to have all the same features you're used to. It's going to work the same. And this new Lightroom CC um, is really geared towards mobile-only users, all right? Probably people who never would have even tuned into our to this Hangout because they they are just using their mobile devices only. And so Adobe is really trying to uh, create two different products here for two different really uses, two different uh, user groups even. There's the, the photographer who's got a DSLR and, an, and a phone and maybe a point and shoot and who knows what else they've got. And they've got you know years of storage and, and Lightroom Classic is really for those folks. Um, and in all the conversations I had, Lightroom Classic's not going away. Um, at the same time, they recognize that there's huge growth in mobile. Uh, there's a huge future in mobile. There's a huge feature in cloud storage and accessing that, uh, that data on, on any device you have. And that's the beauty of this new Lightroom CC. For those people who are, would be using it is that you can capture on your phone and everything that goes through Lightroom CC is stored in the cloud. You open it up on your iPad and you have access to that. You open it up on the new uh, Windows or Mac uh, app for that Lightroom CC, and you have access to that same data, all right? So everything in Lightroom CC at this point, if it goes into Lightroom CC, goes up into the cloud and is stored up in the, up in the cloud, all right? Okay. So that's kind of the big picture of these two things. Now, obviously, there's uh, the rest of us are trying to use maybe both or trying to figure that out and how to, how to interface with that, so. Right. Well, why don't we dive into <sighs> some questions, Rob? Yeah. And then we can uh, come back and maybe do some feature demos and, um, if we have time, because we've got a lot of questions going. Yeah, all right. Some, so why don't you fire off a, fire Okay, up well, a very first of all, Jessica Kaplan says, I am currently using Lightroom 3. I know, okay. I know, she says. Yeah. If I, update to, if I up, upgrade to Lightroom Classic CC, or we'll just call it Lightroom Classic, yes. will my photos and presets travel to the new version? And then do I want to uninstall Lightroom 3? Thanks. All right, that's a good. So this is a good question. And this would apply to any previous version of Lightroom, including Lightroom right. six or Lightroom six, three, four, five, one, yeah, two, right. CC twenty fifteen. All right, yeah. all, 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 all this, all works the same. Um, let me. How about I share my screen, and sure. I'll, I'll show you uh, what I'm talking about as I do it. So and Jessica is one of those photographers who, uh, like, she's really good, and so knowing that she's still using. LR three. Yeah, she's in for she's in for some new features. She's, uh, she's in for some super like she's missing all the features that we got in LR four and yeah. LR five and LR six and there's. <laughs> but can you but see my show that you don't need super editing tools because she does she turns out really terrific photography with an old product. So yeah, do you see yeah, my screen see, now? All right, yes. so I'm going to go up to uh, preferences. So on my Mac here, I go to Lightroom. And preferences. If I was on my Windows machine, it would go to Edit and Preferences. Mm -hmm. And oh, there we go. All right. And so I'm going to go over to the Preset tab here. All right. Now, by default, this setting under Location on Presets is unchecked. Oh, really? All right. Yep. You want that unchecked by default. All right. That's what it is by default unchecked, and that's um, that means that all of your presets and templates are stored in a central location on your operating system. And any version of Lightroom you install is going to look to that place and have access to those presets and templates. Okay. And also, if you install third-party plugins, they often tend to stick their stuff in there in that location too. All right. So if I click on this show Lightroom presets folder button, in my case on Mac here, it's going to open up a finder window. And there's this Lightroom folder. And inside of that, all right, there's my develop presets. I've got Export presets, export actions, you know, all those, all those, every template, text template, all that stuff, that's all in here, okay? So I'm going to switch over 
to uh, the develop module here, just to, just so you understand what's going on here. All right, and I'm just gonna make my preset panel come out. All right, so here are my preset panel. You see I have some custom presets, okay? I'm gonna open up that tab again. Now watch what happens to my presets when I check this box. Boom, gone, all right? They're not really gone, but what happens, and this is, this is a pet peeve of mine, but, uh, and I couldn't possibly explain why this is done, all right? When you check this box, store presets with catalog, Lightroom creates a brand new folder right next to your catalog file mm -hmm. called Lightroom Settings. And instead of copying over all your custom presets, it just puts in the default stock templates and presets. All right? Mm -hmm. So that's why all of them seem to disappear on me uh, here. All right? This setting is really designed with the, with the type of person who maybe has their catalog stored on an external hard drive, and they do so with the purpose of being able to move that external hard drive between multiple computers and access the same catalog and the same set of photos. And in that case, yeah, maybe they want to store the presets there too so they can access those same presets on any computer that they're using. If you're only using one catalog and one computer, then this setting is really not helping you. Um, it's actually re removing any custom presets. Now, you can fix that. It's not intuitive. There's no like clear way to do this. But if I go back to the same show Lightroom presets folder, because this box is checked, it's going to open it in the new place. So I click that button again, all right? And now here's my Lightroom folder with my catalog, all right? And there's that Lightroom settings folder. See how much shorter that list right. is right? than that one? So yeah. I could copy over the, you know, my custom bits over to here, and then those, when I restart Lightroom, will be accessible um, to this catalog only. Because now I've checked that box door with this catalog. If I open up a new catalog, it's not gonna, it's not gonna see it. So, my my advice is, and and I'm gonna guess that for Jessica, uh, this is probably true, is that uh, this box is unchecked. And if so, hey, look at that! I unchecked the box, and all of my custom bits and bobs came right on back. All right, so it's all I did was check and check a box. Okay, right. so we so Jessica should uncheck that box before. Well, hopefully it. it's been unchecked because that's the yeah. default state is unchecked. And okay. if that's the case, you just install the new version, you open it up, and everything's there. All right, that's how it should work. Good. It's only if you've been monkeying around with that and checking it, and uh, you know, then then you've got to do some potential copying of presets to a new location if it if if they don't appear. All right, if they appear, hey, that's great. Don't do anything. Just keep just keep going. All right, but um, but yeah. So by default, that's unchecked, and that's so that any catalog and any version of Lightroom accesses the same place, goes to the same well uh, for those te for those templates and presets. Perfect. And they should be they should be in there. So hopefully Perfect. that that answers uh, Jessica's question. And so yeah, Jessica, that um, you all of your photos and your presets will carry right over, and they'll be updated to work with. The new catalog. Your pictures remain in the same place. It won't change your file structure or anything. Remember, your pictures don't exist in Lightroom. They exist on your computer, and Lightroom is referencing them. It's just right. a catalog. Right. And so don't don't worry. You'll be all right. <laughs> you do not have to uninstall Lightroom 3, but you should not use it. Yeah, well, so once you start using the new version. Classic, all right. So, and so what's going to happen when you first launch Classic? And this is for any previous version of Lightroom user. This is true. The first time you launch Classic, it says, "Hey, you've got a Lightroom catalog. I need to upgrade a copy to work in the new version." It doesn't say it as friendly as that, but that's what it's trying to tell you, all right? And so what it does is it leaves your original catalog alone, and it creates a copy of it, and then it upgrades the copy to work with the new version of Lightroom, all right? Now this new upgraded copy, you can't open that in any older version of Lightroom, and that's right. fine because the intention is you're moving forward with a new version, and as long as the new version suits your needs and you're happy with it, then you move forward with the upgraded copy, and you can then uninstall the old version. But keep it for a little while, make sure everything's working fine. There's definitely some people who you yeah. know, encountered some uh, maybe incompatibility issues with a graphics card or who knows what is actually maybe going on there. And they need to keep working. And, and you, so you just go back to the old version if that's your situation until they release a dot release uh, with a fix for whatever problem you're having. Hopefully that's going to happen soon. Um, 
but that's why you keep both, right? Uh, for a little while, but eventually you're going to want it that you know want that disk space back where Lightroom three is, uh, you know, installed. You want to recover that space, and so you would uninstall it, right? I don't yeah. have Lightroom one, two, three, four, five uh, installed anymore. I still have CC twenty fifteen for a while, but um, interestingly, uh, yeah. can I can I share my screen, Rob? Yes, please uh, do. Because if if there's something you love about about Lightroom 3, you can just come down here. I'm in the develop module. You come down here under camera calibration, and here under the version numbers, you could click on version two, and that would give you all the options you had in Lightroom 3. So right now I've got blacks and fill light and recovery, whereas if I switch it to the current version, version four, now I've got whites and shadows and blacks. And so that actually changes the options I've got. And if for some reason you like working with the version three stuff, with the Lightroom three, you could switch back here and go all the way back to, to the Lightroom one edition as well. And then you don't even get, um, yeah, like, like it changes everything. Um, and it, it changes everything in your adjustment brushes and, and stuff. So I recommend sticking with four, but if there's something that you just loved about working that way, you can find it back right there. Yeah, but just know that if you use an older process version, you may not have access to some of the other new features that you might want to use, right. like the new range mask, um, like dehaze, or you know, some of those things are. When they come up with these new process versions, it's not like they just go, "Hey, let's make a new process." Version. But there's actually a new, there's a different math, a different algorithm, different way of uh, processing that data, um, that raw data, especially, um, right. and that enables these new features to do a better job of noise reduction, to do a better job of mm -hmm. sharpening, to do a better job of, you know, masking or whatever those things are that that new process version would include. So, so yeah, so maybe if you need for a little while, a little bit of a, a crutch <laughs> to go, you know, right. stick with the tools you're familiar with, right. but just know that you, you won't, you won't see some of the new features if that uh, older process version is enabled. Rob, we had a question related to the presets you were showing. So Gary updated, to Lightroom CC the other day, and he says he lost all his presets. All right, Gary. So uh, what what I want you to do is to go to that to that screen that I did. So go to preferences and then presets, right? And if that box is checked, don't do anything else yet. Just if it's checked, just note that. Okay, it's checked. If it's checked, that means the Lightroom it's you know is storing that uh, those presets with the catalog. All right. And now, is, he going to that, is he going to that preset to the settings panel in Lightroom CC? Yeah. So in, in uh, CC. Yeah. So okay. basically, what, what it, Lightroom should not have deleted presets. Usually, what like you saw when I did it, they yeah. just get hidden depending on which box is checked. All right. So just note if it, if you open that up and it's checked uh, that it's looking at a specific folder that's associated with a specific catalog. All right. Um, if it's unchecked then it's looking at that central location. And so your presets were in either one of those two places previously. I don't know which place it was in. Uh, but as you can see, that if, it, if it's checked and you click that Show Lightroom Presets Folder button, it's going to open to the place where it's, where it's pointing. Right? Then you can go back to the preferences, uncheck the box, click that button again, it'll go to the central location. It should be in one of those two locations. And my recommendation is unless you otherwise need it, to be stored with a catalog is to keep it referred to that central location. And you could just manually copy and paste the presets, that your custom ones, you don't need to worry about the stock ones, uh, from one to the other, right? And then that, that's what they should be on there, right? So presets, he, says it's, he says it's unchecked. Yeah. Where, where do presets show up in the new CC? Uh, like, your, I, like where do I see them in the panel? Like it's a different layout, right? It's a no. different looking tool. It's not. Yeah, you're talking about just develop presets, right? I think so. Yeah. Um, Maybe I'm thinking of the web interface is different than the. Are you? Is he talking about classic or? or he CC? said CC. Oh, I see. I see. I see. I see. Um, all right. So yeah. Sorry. <laughs> this is where I get confused. We're <laughs> trying to keep all these versions straight. Um, yeah. So Lightroom CC. Uh, you can bring in your uh, your other presets, but they're not just going to appear automatically. Um, and I'm going to have to 
I'll have to kind of circle back on that one because uh, okay. not, that's not coming up to the front of my brain at the moment. Um, yeah, so let me let me move on. I will circle back to that because it's uh, right it's a okay. different it's a slightly different animal. So apologies for confusing that. Yeah, there's no preference in CC the root that we can refer to. So sorry if I was confusing you further on that. No, that's good. Thank you. Yeah. Um, and so Gary, we'll we'll try to get back to that one. Yeah. Um, Richard is asking about the new range mask. Okay, so demonstration and when to use luminance or color. Uh, yeah, so um, how about I'll show that. Uh, let me uh, let me share my screen first before I just dive on over there. And so this is a new feature in Lightroom Classic and Lightroom CC, right? It's in CC, right? It's no, it's in Classic. Just in Classic. Okay, yeah, so it's in Lightroom Classic, classic which is the tool that I'm using. Yeah, and uh, and I think. It's going to be pretty cool. And all right, you, it's under the adjustment brushes, the radial mask, the yeah, all the under all the local adjustments there. Yeah. Do you see my screen now? Yes. All right. So I'm going to um, also touch on one of the other new features that I think is worth talking about um, as far as performance improvement, and that's um, this new way to uh, the the new way it deals with the embedded in sidecar setting under build preview. So I'm on the import screen. I popped in a memory card of some photos I took uh, while I was in New York, right? And you can see that some of these are grayed out. That's because some are I already imported, all right? So Lightroom is still, you know, this is classic. It still works the same way um, as it did before in, in terms of how the screen looks. But even the setting that used to be there, it behaves differently now, all right? So, um, for anyone who's ever used a product called Photo Mechanic because Lightroom was too slow on the imp on the culling process, this tries to do the same thing in that it just uses the previews that are embedded in the actual oh, really? photo. All right. Okay. So, so here we have some pictures of uh, the Brooklyn Bridge. I got to walk across that for the first time. Nice. Which was very cool. It was a beautiful morning. Uh, my buddy Randy and I went over to to photograph uh, on the other side there. So I'll just select some bunch of these so it doesn't take too long here. And what I want to be able to do is to be able to go through these quickly by using this embedded in sidecar setting, all right? Um, <coughs> that's the only you know important setting I'm going to deal with on here. So I'll just collapse all that and apply an embedded data preset. And of course, w when you're copying, you need to make sure you know where they're going. And so I do. Um, mm -hmm. Once you've got another just a little tip is that when you've got your import screen set up the way you want with a bunch of settings Way down here at the bottom. It's kind of hidden You can you can create a preset that saves all your import dialogue settings All right, and so I have one here called speedy and all it does is really it uses that embedded and sidecar Setting and it copies my photos over is that new the, the import preset down there? Well, I just made it so you you set it up the way you want, and then you come down here and choose there. the the setting in the file handling panel for embedded yeah. in sidecar has been there, but it didn't really <laughs> do anything different in right. terms of like. So here's the, the the slowdown part here is that Lightroom up to this moment in time, um, no matter which of these settings you chose, Lightroom had to render its own preview based on the. The raw, you know, the raw data of your right. photo and, and Lightroom settings, plus any preset you might have added, whatever the default settings you have, right? And that takes time for Lightroom to render out those previews. So this new setting says, hey, before you go through all that trouble, how about you just import the embedded preview that the camera stored um, with the uh, with that raw photo, and, nice. and we'll and we'll just use that uh, to go from. Uh, for this culling stage, you know, because maybe we don't need to render a preview for every photo I'm about to delete <laughs> because it sucks, right? right? right. So, um, so this that can speed the, the process up. So I'm gonna click on import. Now, Let's, what if you, what if you convert to DNG? Is it still keeping that embedded preview? It, yeah, well, it, it'll use it for for the, the the beginning, right? And then once you start developing it, then it then it replaces. The embedded preview with the uh, with the new with Lightroom Light rendered one. All right, I got you. And so, see so where up here it says fetching initial preview. So it's just pulling in the the embedded thumbnail for each of these photos. All right, and now um, I'm just going to cycle through my my uh, thumbnail grid here. So we this little icon. Let me zoom in so you can really see it. But 
that little icon there, so that tells you that this is using an embedded preview. All right, I'm hit J again. You can see that this is a raw mm -hmm. file. This is a JPEG. All right, so the JPEG Zoom doesn't Zoom have that because the JPEG, you know, is the JPEG. But in the right. case of the raw file, instead of rendering out a new preview for this, um, it shows it throws that up there. All right, so that tells me that this is an embedded preview. All right, gotcha. and so if I were to go and zoom in, you know, there's no loading there. But now when I'm on the raw file, this little bezel, whatever this thing is called here, and uh, by some engineer created, you know, it says embedded preview. So I know that I'm looking at the embedded preview here of a raw file, right? And so I can much more, I can move through my photos much much faster than I could yeah. before because it's either showing me the JPEG, all right, because it's just JPEG, JPEG, or it's showing me the preview uh, in the raw file, all right? So it's not rendering, all right? Uh, and that can make this the whole culling part uh, of your workflow go a lot faster, right? And so okay. let's say that I want to keep this photo. I'm not, not going to go through, you know, rating and selecting all that kind of stuff. This is certainly not the best photo of my time there, but it's the one that I landed on. So I'm going to just hit the D key and jump over to develop to try to deal with the second part of uh, that question. All right. And so we can see here that you know we've got blue sky up here. We've got the you know very dark foreground. The sun was coming up behind me. Um, and if I want to do something with the blue sky to select this, so, so say I could grab a uh, graduated filter, right? And I'm just going to hold the shift key so it stays, you know, in line here. And I'm just going to drag it down, like so. All right. And so now I have this graduated filter that you know I want to deal with the sky. But obviously, there's some stuff uh, in the way, right? There's all the cables of the Brooklyn Bridge. Uh, there's buildings and stuff like that in the background. So this is where range mask, this new function in Classic, can, can be useful. So I'm going to turn this on. And this is where it lives. Under the, you have to choose a local adjustment first, apply that local adjustment, and then scroll down to the bottom, and you can see this local adjustment uh, option that appears here. So I'm going to set this to color. All right, and so it says right here, use the color range selector, which looks this like a little eyedropper here, to sample colors within the mask area. I have my mask overlay turned on in, in red here, so if I turn it off, press the O key, turn it back on. All right, there's my, my mask, all right. Um, I, I can just click one time uh, to sample a color, like that. All right, but I can also click and drag for greater accuracy. So in the sky, I've got this kind of gradient of blue, right, so instead of just that one single click, I can also just drag out all right, and you can see where, you know, depending on how you click and drag, you know, how it will affect your mask and, and you can see what you're getting in there, all right? Um, the parts that are no longer affected by the mask are no longer red, all right? And so just by clicking around in that sky, I've taken out most of the cables uh, in the bridge from my adjustment here. Oh, nice. So okay. then we have this amount slider. All right, and we can change that to affect how much uh, it kind of blends, you know, how far it goes in that blue. So I'm going to drag this down because I really want to try to take out any of the of the cabling and just have the sky. All right, and so by dragging that lower lower down, I've I've now managed to mask out the whole sky. So before we would have had to, you know, draw down this um, gradient filter, graduated filter, and then. Maybe we could get the the brush part of the graduated filter and brush out, you know, these little lines. Yeah, forget about that. You never would want to do that. Um, so now I can turn off the mask, and so now I could maybe if I wanted to darken down the sky. You know, I'm not darkening down the the cabling and the bridge. Nice, right? Yeah. And so you know that that's pretty cool. That's a nice little function uh, to have. Um, and so the uh, luminance. Um, is the other part of that. So I'm just going to click my escape key to get out of that. Um, I have a good example of, of that another time I was in New York. Let's see. Actually, I think, uh, I think I saw LeVon was on here. Before. Oh, yeah? Um, and LeVon and I went down. Uh, I was down in, in New York last time. That's too bad. It was the uh, Flatiron Building, uh, but I had a good um, had a good foreground. So let me see if I can find just one that I had a second ago. Oh, okay. 
nieces and nephews. I'll just I'll just stay with one of these since. Levon says hi. She's spying on us while she's working. Of course she is. Hi, Levon. Um, Teresa right. Thompson also says hi, Rob. Hi, <laughs> hi, Tess. So with the with the luminance masking, I'm just going to go the other way here. So say I wanted to to lighten this part up right. down here. All right. So I drew a graduated filter. I'll turn the mask on so you can see it's on the bottom of this particular photo. All right, and I come down here to luminance. All right, and now the options here are a little bit different. All right. So I've got uh, a range where I can choose what area, let me turn my mask back on. So we could choose what area of the mask based on the luminance values is being affected, right? And in this case, I want to really just affect the darkest parts. The darkest areas, oh, that's right? cool. And so I want to reduce, I want to reduce that range to not include those highlights that are in this area. Oh, that's just awesome. be the darker parts, right? It's kind of it's kind of like it's separated the two functions of the auto mask, right? Which looks for luminance and color, and allows us to select based just on those things. But it's it's separated those two things apart, and uh, doing it broad scale instead of only with a brush. So if you hold the Alt or Option key down while you click on this, you can also see that mask and what's being affected in there. Right? Very. So, um, white reveals, black conceals, and most uh, Photoshop type things. So I like just having the overlay on, and you can see that. And so now if I were to come back in here and try to just address those those shadowy areas, I don't want to blow out the, uh, well, that's pretty dark, but you know what I mean? I don't want to blow out the, the highlights on there. Um, and you can use those things in, in conjunction. You can use that with a radial mask. You can use that with the adjustment brush. It's just a way to kind of fine tune. So first you just put out your, um, your local adjustment, and then you can hone in on the range that you want to that you want to deal with. Excellent. Mm -hmm. That is pretty pretty awesome. In fact, yeah, so that's kind of the new kind of wow feature in uh, in classic. Actually, the embedded the embedded workflow too, I think, could really help a yeah, lot of people. That's pretty wow. Uh, it's pretty speed fast. Things, speed things along. That is pretty fast. Okay, let's see here. Um, <clears throat> Thomas Riley says, I purchased a standalone version of Lightroom and have been holding off purchasing the subscription. Is it worth upgrading now? And if so, which of the two new versions is the best buy? Yes, All right. it's worth upgrading now. Yeah, so <laughs> the I, I think it is, but it, it also keep in mind, so with, the, uh, with those other two announcements that came out on Max with the new Lightroom Classic and the new Lightroom CC, they also announced that Lightroom 6 is going to be the last perpetual license version of Lightroom that's going to be available. Yeah. So that means that if you don't, if you want to use Lightroom, but you don't want to buy into the subscription model, then Lightroom Six is your last version for that. And um, I don't know when it'll stop being on, you know, for sale in the stores. I don't think they just all vanished, uh, you know, from places like B and H and Best Buy and Adorama and such. Um, uh, Amazon. I'm sure you can still actually buy it today. And actually, they just released uh, last Thursday the dot thirteen update um, for for Lightroom six to include new camera support, such as the the new Nikon D850. And the the plan that I've been told is there'll be at least one more dot release for Lightroom six before the end of this calendar year. And that is uh, at this point in time, what I heard is going to be the last update for new camera support. Um, in Lightroom 6, right? So okay. that's really the last update for Lightroom 6. Um, so after 2017 is behind us, um, Lightroom 6 won't be, there will be no more updates for Lightroom 6. As, so as if you Lightroom buy 6. a new camera, it's not going to work. The, the raw files aren't going to work in Lightroom 6. Right, but... If you buy the Nikon D950... <laughs> but what you, you could do, new. all right, so for anyone who's... Who's still like I'm not? I want to use Lightroom, but I don't want to go all the way in yet. Um, you you still will have the option to use the free DNG converter uh, that Adobe updates with every new update for Camera Raw yep. and for for the newest latest version of Lightroom. Um, so you so say you know two years from now you get whatever the new thing camera is. You're still holding on to Lightroom six point fourteen, right? Um, you can use the DNG converter that's free. Run your raw photos through that, and then import them into Lightroom. Six. You can import them into Lightroom One. That's DNG's black backwards compatible. So um, yeah, 
So you can still do that, and it's a perpetual license. You can do that as long as your operating system supports that that software. Uh, you could still work on that for. I mean, Jessica's still using Lightroom three, right? Right. So, um, right. so you could foreseeably be using Lightroom six uh, dot. I'm gonna guess dot fourteen if that's actually the last one for for years to come. Uh, and, and and using Adobe's free DNG converter. Um, so you could still absolutely do that. You won't have the new features, but hey, if you're happy with what you got, then the, then fine, yeah. right? Um, and, and Lightroom Classic is probably the one to go to if you are, if you're a, if you're a, a user of Lightroom CC 2015 or of Lightroom right. 6, <clears throat> you probably want Lightroom Classic. Yeah, you really do, you really do. I'm just gonna say you yeah. do, all right? so. Um, and here's why. Because Lightroom Classic is a version 7 product. Lightroom CC is a version 1 product, right? Right. <laughs> and while Lightroom CC has a lot of really cool features and functions in it, it is n does not have everything that Lightroom 6, C, I mean 6 or 7 or is classic, I really want to call it, does not have it, okay? So yeah. if you want to print, can't do that, right? You could go to edit in Photoshop and print to Photoshop, I guess, right? Can't make books, can't do slideshows, right? Um, there's there's a lot of functionality that's just not in CC. It only came out, you know, two weeks ago. So, right. um, uh, it, and, it, and, and also, keep in mind, it's not really intended for, for us. If you're listening to this, I'm gonna guess you're using some version of Lightroom already. This new Lightroom CC for Windows and Mac isn't really for us, right? It's for this mobile-only crowd and that's really who's in, you know the target audience for that product at this moment in time. Will Having said that, our buddy Monty just went all in. He says on LRCC, and he's really looking forward to all photos everywhere. So that I mean that is a cool function. That's but, the allure, right? Yeah. yeah. Who you know I like that idea too, um, but I'm not ready to give up all the function I have in Classic. Now I use Lightroom CC on my phone. All right, I use it on my iPad. And two weeks ago, it was called Lightroom Mobile, right? right? And so Lightroom Classic can still work with Lightroom Mobile slash Lightroom CC on mobile devices in that Lightroom Classic uh, can control what um, collection is synced with your mobile devices, right? And so, for example, I was when I was in New York this past week, I was out shooting in uh, a few places, and I just had my camera and I had my phone. But I brought along the camera connection kit for my iPhone. Right, and so while I was off shooting, and uh, Levon was navigating us around, I would throw my uh, camera connection kit into my iPhone and import a few raw photos straight from my camera uh, memory card, and then I would bring them. I would import those into Lightroom CC on my iPhone, edit them, and then the full NEF file, full resolution NEF file, would upload into the cloud. Um, along with all my settings. And then eventually, when I opened up my laptop and opened up Lightroom Classic, the full resolution RAW file, edited and all, downloads right to my hard drive where I told it to go uh, and, and those edits. So you can use Classic and the mobile app uh, with mobile devices in the same way we used it with Lightroom CC 2015. However, right. it's not really designed, Lightroom Classic and Lightroom C aren't really designed to work together. All right, mm -hmm. <laughs> it's just not, it's just, so like keywords don't sync that. Um, and right, which is too bad because. Right, you know, and so. Keywords in the CC. We and get, and, and the, the important thing to remember is that anything that gets imported into CC at this moment in time goes up to the cloud, all right? And if you have Lightroom Classic on and synced, you know, sync enabled, then anything that, that hits the cloud is gonna download full res into Lightroom Classic. Hmm. Lightroom Classic cannot upload full res to the cloud. There's no way to get, if you've got, you know, so I've got a two terabyte hard drive attached to my laptop right now. There's no way using Lightroom Classic for me to get the full res of every file, uh, you know, in my two terabytes of, of storage up into the cloud. Right. So, through Lightroom Classic. There is no way to do that. Right. Um, there's no clean and easy way to do that. Okay, I'm sure I know people are working on trying to figure out how to hack around that. Um, but I'm just going to say for the people who use me for help to support uh, to avoid self-inflicted injury uh, at this point in time, um, from what I've been told uh, by the people that know, those two products just aren't meant to work uh, together. Um, 
They're really, at this point, designed for two different audiences. I, I want that to change because I, yeah, I like Monty. I like the idea of having at least not not everything, but the most important things available everywhere. That would right. be nice. Um, right. And at the same time, with Lightroom CC, you cannot you cannot control what goes up into the cloud. All right, so everything goes into CC, goes up into the cloud. And if you know, if you're a photographer who's maybe shooting sensitive stuff, um, unreleased stuff, or maybe you don't feel comfortable about having that go in the cloud. All right, um, so that's not really for you, and you don't have a way to control that right now. But you can use Classic, and you can control by using you know collections. And this is you know part of what uh, or part of showing you why there's a diff these are kind of different products is. In, in now in the mobile in Lightroom CC, they renamed what were collections are now called albums. Right? In classic, right. they're still called collections, but on Lightroom CC, they're called albums. And albums yeah. are organized into groups using folders. <laughs> okay, um, but on Lightroom Classic, we know folders are what actually is on our hard drive, right? Right. So. Um, there's there's differences even in the keyboard shortcuts aren't the same in both of those. So uh, I don't recommend at this point in time, I just for your own sanity uh, and mine, because you're going to ask me what's going on. Uh, if you're going to use classic, just use classic, right? Just use classic. If you're going to use CC and go all in, God bless you, and go all in on it. Um, but this turn off sync on classic, just so you don't create these uh, potential problems for yourself. Um, and yeah. And, 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 and it'll just be, you know, use them as they're intended, I guess is what I'm saying. Right? And this has been true for Lightroom all, since Lightroom first came out 10 years ago, is if you use it as intended, it works, you know, the, well. But if you start using it the way you want to use it, obviously, I'm, uh, yeah, I, of course, you want to use it the way you want it. And, and this goes back to using, like, for people who prior to two weeks ago wanted to just use Lightroom on more than one computer. You had to kind of go all these kind of, like, well, store everything on an external hard drive and swap. So hard drives, I mean, you had to kind of work around the way it was intended to use it to suit your needs. I get it. I do that, too. Um, but just when you do that, you're, you're potentially going to um, run into unforeseen um, consequences. And I'm trying to, I'm trying to play it safe. Uh, Thanks, Rob. Time. Yeah. That's two, good. Two weeks out from here. That's good. Uh, let's see. Declan Flynn asked, can I charge a battery from, or can I charge a phone from the Narbox battery? Yes. You can also charge the box from a USB battery. That's cool. Um, yeah, that's pretty cool. Levi, are you going to visit Portland Pack again? Yes, Rod, I will be there. In fact, on November 11th, I'm teaching at Pro Photo Supply. We're doing a workshop there, and you had to come down and join us for that. Um, are any plugins broken with the new Classic? I haven't had any trouble yet. No, I haven't, I haven't heard. Yeah. Uh, they're... they're Suppose there could be, um, and by plugins, there's what we refer to as uh, third-party editors. You're talking like the on ones of the world, the perfectly clears. You know, those are sometimes referred to as plugins, even though they're really just an external editing uh, application. I don't know of any of those that have been broken by it. And then there's uh, plugins that are more like um, export plugins, like published plugins, or yeah, published services for like. Um, I don't know. Smug mug, smug mug? Yeah. right? Yeah. So I don't, I haven't heard, but I, I, there's always a chance. Uh, but nothing is, right. nothing has come across my, my desk. Now things that I know. So I had um, an animated conversation with, with a Lightroom customer uh, at, at Photoshop at uh, Photo Plus Expo who was on a super heavy duty spec'd out machine and was having not just you know the same performance as before, but worse performance. So. Yeah. Uh, I know that there's some configurations of hardware. I think I was standing right next to that guy when I was waiting in line to ask you a question. Then, that might have been true, yeah. And, and you know, and he's been having this trouble for a while, so I don't, I don't blame him for being upset. Um, mm -hmm. But so I, I am aware. I don't know the reason or the cause yet, but I know that um, there are some people out there who who shouldn't be having trouble because they've got really powerful machines who have been having yeah. some trouble. Uh, but for the most part. Uh, Really, the biggest questions I have are around confusion, around the naming, uh, for obvious reasons. But once that was explained, people seem to be happy with the, with the improvements, even if they still want more, of course. Um, uh, and then um, and then just really trying to figure out how to use these, right? And I think that's yeah. where we're all at, you know, so 
this is this is a little unprecedented to have a product that we've known for 10 plus years uh, get an upgrade at the same time get a new name and at the same time have a new product with the old product's name come out with a version one yeah that's a little confusing <laughs> <right>? <laughs> and then we're all trying to figure out um, how to use it now I, th I really feel like as someone who uses mobile devices who uses you know I don't really probably go anywhere too far away from my laptop or my tablet I like having both and I like having the power of classic yeah I'd love to have the, some some way to use both of these feature sets uh, in a way that doesn't cause self-inflicted injury. Um, and that seems like a reasonable thing to ask for. So I, I definitely. But maybe not yet. Maybe not yet. Maybe That's not right. yet. And so I think that also answers David Moore's question about moving edited images from classic to CC, have it manage your best images. I, I think, Dave, you could do that by simply using the, like the, the mobile version and using publishing from your Lightroom classic into your Lightroom mobile, which is yeah. mobile. Yeah. Yeah. So the, the, the currently the and, way and I'm using your best images that way. Right. So I'm using Lightroom Classic and Lightroom CC on my iPhone and my iPad is I have a number of different collections that I have turned on to sync. Some of them might be collections of photos that I want to just say, hey, like portfolio type, hey, this is stuff I shot. Uh, one is a collection that I essentially use as my camera roll on my phone. And so that's kind of coming back down to classic. So I open up that collection, now called album, um, on my iPhone, and then I hit the new camera, I hit the camera module, and I open up the camera, which is awesome. Uh, I was shooting pan, when we were on that photo walk, I'm shooting panning shots with my iPhone because I can control shutter speed and ISO right, right from that Lightroom app. That was awesome. Right. Um, and you're shooting in RAW. And shooting in RAW, right? Yeah. And so all of those photos that I shoot on, on my phone end up in that, uh, special collection, aka album, and then those is a full res download to my laptop, and that works great. So it can work that way. It can work up by having only smart previews of certain photos available um, for viewing. I teach a community college class on photography and uh, Photoshop, and I import all the students' work into the different collections, and then I share that back to them so they can go on through Lightroom Web and see each other's work and comment and like and. You know, and that's been really a nice functionality, and I can see that just coming into my mobile app or into my classic catalog, their questions and comments. So I'm finding other ways to use it. Um, it's just trying to keep it separate in terms of where I ingest content. For the most part, it's through Lightroom Classic, and it's stored locally on my hard drives. And if there's some subsets of that I want to make available, um, then I I sync those collections over. All right, um, I haven't. I haven't found a good way to use Lightroom CC on my laptop that I'm running Classic on. I don't see any reason to do that. Right. Now, could I put it on my other laptop or my other computer and use it like a dummy terminal? Yeah, I guess I could, uh, but I just have to be, be mindful of what I'm doing there so I don't yeah. um, create any, you know, duplicates. It takes or, a lot of mindfulness. Yeah. It does take a little bit more mindfulness. So, yeah, so you just want to, you want to take it slow and easy and, and don't make assumptions about just because it has the word Lightroom in it. It's going to do what you think it's going to do. Right. Yeah. Right. Levon says your pictures in your catalog are beautiful. Um, Thanks, Levon. Does Lightroom CC have a Plex style service? No, Declan. It's not. It's not doing what you're talking about here. Can yeah. I store files on my own server but access them in Lightroom anywhere? No. No. It doesn't. Although there are some plugins for. Like I've used some apps on my iPad that kind of do that, but it's it's almost more of a remote desktop app, yeah. and that like those may perform better than any of the Lightroom specific ones. Um, let's see. I think we're just about caught up on questions, which is good. And all these questions, everybody who left a comment gets entered in the drawing for a complimentary license for perfectly clear. Cool. Yeah, boy. Lightroom. That's, that's well, it works nice. with Lightroom Classic. I don't think it's it's not going to work with Lightroom CC. Is that right, Rob? Uh, we... Yeah, so there's no plug-in support in CC right now. Yeah. All right. Um, well, you can select a photo in CC if you're on the, on the Windows or Mac version of it, and you can send it to Photoshop. All right. Yeah. Um, so one thing I, I guess I'll just I didn't clarify earlier is that so because there's only Lightroom is only available via subscription 
right now, all right, the new version. Um, there's really kind of a few different plans, right? There's the full boat, you know, Creative Cloud subscription that's like forty nine forty nine ninety nine a month, and right. that gives you all the Adobe software. Okay, so you can get it that way. I'm gonna guess most of us are not doing that. Some of us, you know, if you need Premiere, or you need Illustrator, you know, maybe you, you would go that route. But for most folks, are gonna go the Creative Cloud photography plan, which existed prior to you know two weeks ago, and it was nine ninety nine a month, and it still is nine ninety nine ninety nine a month, or you could prepay for a year, and that includes Lightroom Classic, the new Lightroom Classic. It includes the new version of Photoshop. The whole new version of Photoshop came out too, which is really big news because there's a lot of really cool stuff in the new Photoshop CC 2018. Including right. It actually can integrate and access photos that are synced through Lightroom Classic. <laughs> I mean, through Lightroom CC. <laughs> yeah. Lightroom CC. Sorry, oh, Lightroom man. CC. Yeah, so photos that you sync in Classic, like via collections, that you sync with Lightroom right. CC can be accessible through that cloud connection. So that's one of the things in, in Photoshop CC 2018. Um, then you also have access to Lightroom, the new Lightroom CC, but you only get 20 gigs of storage. So it's it's kind of a bit of a teaser. So if you have the Creative Cloud Photography plan that from before, you have it now. You have you're going to go with Classic to upgrade from CC 2015. Um, you'll see Lightroom CC as one of the options in there. Um, but at this point, unless you're going all, unless you're going the full Monty, <laughs> you're going all in, um, I, I don't recommend installing it on your computer at this point. Just stick with classic and make your life simple. Right. Right. But like Rachel says, should like, and, and several other people, yes, your Lightroom Mobile, which is now called Lightroom CC, still works with your Lightroom Classic the same way we did before. Yes, taking photos from my Lightroom Classic into into mobile. Yeah, so if I just if I have a moment here, I'm going to share my screen here, right? And that's only like, and I'm just talking about on my mobile device, on my phone or on my iPad, using Lightroom CC on these devices still communicates normally with Lightroom Classic on my yeah desktop. Are you or seeing my, my screen now? All right, yes. so here's, here's my phone. Okay. So the Lightroom, what was Lightroom Mobile, all right, in the in the update that came out since the name changed to Lightroom CC, all right. So on my mobile device, this is Lightroom CC, all right. And so this is the collection that I use as my camera roll, all right. And so any photos I I capture in here uh, using the camera module here. So I'll just open that up. There's my desk. Um, if I took a photo, that would be added to that collection. That full res photo would sync down to my classic catalog, all right. All of these albums, as we see it called albums here, all right? These are the collections, the same collections that are in my Lightroom Classic catalog, all right? And so I switch over to Lightroom Classic here, and I'll go to my collections panel, right? I have a collection set, right? And collection sets, you can think of a collection set on Lightroom CC. They're now called um, folders, all right? But here they're called collection sets. Um, I have a from Lightroom Mobile, right? And there's that same phone, right? Collection. So everything that's in here is the same thing we just saw in Lightroom CC. Um, and if I install the Lightroom CC app for Mac or Windows, I would see the same exact stuff, right? And the interface for editing and for access and collections would look very similar to what we saw in my phone, okay? Um, so you can use Classic with the mobile app of CC, um, but just know that there are some pieces of data that don't sync back and forth, like like keywords. Um, I can't think of that. I know there's something else, but um, it's uh, it's one of those things, right? And so, um, like for example, another thing that doesn't sync back, and so this particular collection here, Robbie phone, it's inside a collection set in Classic that I had created years ago. Uh, right. From Lightroom Mobile, but on my mobile device, that particular collection or album now is inside of a folder <laughs> called From Lightroom CC. Right? So we'll, we'll have a little they bit. don't they don't it's, sync over, right? Yeah. So this this is why I'm trying to save you this kind of confusion, right? Is is to go go one route or the other route. Um, gotcha. To um, and so Annette's got a question too. 
she says she keeps her Lightroom catalog on an external hard drive. Does she need to upgrade both her desktop and her laptop to Lightroom Classic? If you're gonna open up that catalog on both, then yes. Yes. And so with the Creative Cloud subscription, you can install Lightroom Classic on two computers and be logged into Lightroom you know, Classic and the Adobe Application Manager on both. And you can use it that way, all right? And that's right. that's that's that has been the case for mm -hmm. some time. If you got a third computer, you could install it on that third computer, but you'd have to log out of one of the other ones to to use it. But really, you can be um, you could be installed on more than two, but you can only be logged into two at a time uh, through the classic subscription. And so, and here's that panning shot I did with my phone. Right? Yes. Um, and I didn't win. Levi did not pick me. So <laughs> I'm a little. Not. I'm a little sad about I did not. that. Like, um, she had. The cops framed in some bars. It looks pretty cool. <laughs> yeah, so, it, it's true. There was. I'm, I'm just teasing. So yeah. So there's and there and I still like to use. Um, so like the these collections that have um, the little yellow thing there. Those have comments on. It. Those are from my students. And so I like having that functionality with mobile. All right. There's there's a lot to like about the, having access to that mobile environment from classic. You just need to tread carefully. You know. Just and 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 I'm sure there's going to be more things that. Um, and maybe don't play nicely between the two uh, until we kind of see where this is all headed. Right. right. Well, so I'm with Cecil. I'm sticking with Classic. It still works for me, and uh, and I, I think we recommend it for most most of us watching this show. Most of us using Lightroom, especially in any kind of professional capacity, you're going to have a much easier time if you stick with Lightroom Classic. And I'm excited to see what Monty does with. Mm, CC. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Keep it, Monty. Let us know how that goes. I, I yeah. really like to hear how that goes. That'll be I, fun. Um, Tess, if you're not seeing the new stuff, log out of um, log out of the Creative Cloud app, and then log back in, and that should that should trigger that. Oh, and so Cecil's got a question. How do you how do you report a problem? All right, so that's a good question, Cecil. I wanted to, I wanted to highlight this. So let me to share my screen once more. If Levi doesn't mind, go for that. it. Um, and so a great place to go, I'm sorry, you're probably seeing infinite Levi's right now. Um, <laughs> go to feedback.photoshop.com, all right? This is, this is the um, community-powered support uh, for Photoshop and Lightroom. And, and this is a great place to go, and first you can search and see if your um, issue is um, already known and out there. And this is populated by other Lightroom and Photoshop users, just like us. Uh, but also the um, the team, the Lightroom team, checks in here too, and they they keep an eye on stuff, and they often will ask, uh, you know respond. Victoria Bampton, who we've had on our Hangout, who's awesome. She's an amazing wealth of the Lightroom queen, uh, well named. Um, she chimes in. So this is a great place to go to report a problem. It's also a good place to put feature requests, um, but it's a it's a it's a wealth of information in here <coughs> to see what's going on uh, in the Lightroom world. And if you've got a particular problem, um, you can get help in there. And uh, I highly recommend going there. So Cecil, go there. Um, also, for anyone who uh, missed it earlier, so I, I have a post on Lightroom Killer Tips. I, I write uh, once a week on there every every Wednesday, and I have a whole kind of post on the new stuff that, that kind of walks through and maybe goes into some of the more granular stuff that we didn't get to cover in our hour here. So if you can just go to Lightroom Killer Tips, it was the post that came out on October 18th when this all launched. Um, and there's a lot of comments <laughs> about that. My most commented uh, article on there so far. So so that's uh, that's where to go. And, and obviously, you can come back here next month and I'll try to help. Right. As always. Uh, if you're a okay. Kelby One member, you can reach me that way too. Uh, Excellent. Yeah. Excellent. So, well, any other? Can we reach you, Rob? I think I think that's just about. That's about it. I think we've just about covered everything. Now remember, folks, this is recorded, and you can go back and uh, watch this and get all the links and the details and exactly where that settings panel is and where the uh, import with embedded previews is and all that stuff you can skim through and watch. In fact, I recommend watching it at two times speed. Yeah. Yeah. Just because definitely. Rob is a chipmunk is <laughs> classic. It's really yeah, good. That's good. Um, 
Yeah, sorry, Tess. Uh, not sure. Do yeah, you can call them. I I pity you. You have to spend a lot of time on hold for that. Um, maybe you I, just have. Maybe you've already installed it. You know, maybe you're drinking and you didn't even notice you did it. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> uh, yeah. Um, see, so if you have trouble with the Smug Mug plugin, I'd reach out to Smug Mug. Um, I hope we don't have too much trouble with it. Because <laughs> yeah, I know. I use it daily. Yeah. Um, but they, <laughs> but at they, the same they, time, so I didn't delete my my cc 2015 and i can still use that um, yeah except you can't you know you can't access the same catalog in 2015 it's just right classic. so I, I may have to degrade for a minute downgrade until that gets fixed well thanks a ton rob yeah well I'm thank you Levi. is Let's there anything that you wanted to say that I, I yammered the whole time no i i appreciate your wisdom and experience and uh all those people standing in line to talk to you for the last three days really uh really honed your your uh answering question skills <laughs> yeah um on this stuff. The, the other thing i'll just say as a closing thing is that this is not static all right none of this is right. static this is not the way it is for the, for the rest <laughs> of our lives all right this is just how it is the moment in time two weeks after this launched um i expect because lightroom is only subscription based now for both classic ncc and the mobile apps that we hopefully will see a more rapid evolution and uh, updates coming coming our way um, as we move forward into 2018. And um, everything that we said for now in this moment, I think is as true and as safe as I can, you know, put it out there. But I, I hope it's going to change. I hope it's going to keep evolving. And oh yeah, for and, sure. And 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 what you know, I recommend now may not be. You know, things may change. All right. Um, and I'm going to keep testing. We got Monty's going to be trying, so we're going to keep trying. And I know other people are testing, and we're going to find other workflows and and maybe best ways to do it with minimal self-inflicted injury. So uh, we'll we'll just keep on banging on it until we figure that stuff out. And and hopefully, you know, a, a dot release will come out and resolve anyone's uh, other problems uh, that they're having performance-wise and get us all moving forward. So yeah. And I've drawn our winner for the uh, complimentary copy of Perfectly Clear Complete, and it's Jessica Kaplan. Oh, so great. Jessica, if you'll just send me an email at levi at photofocus.com, I will get you set up there. So thanks for tuning in, everybody. Rob, where can we catch up with you? What's going yeah, well, on? Well, uh, on photofocus.com. Um, I'm actually teaching, if anyone's in Boston area, I'm teaching a all day Lightroom class with the Boston Camera Club on Saturday. I think there's a couple slots still open for that. Um, and I look forward to getting down there again. It's a nice club. Um, but uh, other than that, I'm, I'm going to be home for a while. For hopefully Good. the rest of this calendar year. Uh, I just get ready for the winter. Right on. New Hampshire. Yeah. Right on. <laughs> All right. Well, that's How about you, Levi? Where can we find you, Mister? I'll be moving around the world right here. Yeah, I'll be. Oh, well, so I've moved into my new. You can see we've moved into our new house in Boise, Idaho, and uh, I'll be I'll be right here for most of the time. But um, and I'll be on photofocus.com for sure, and Instagram at photo Levi, and we'll be back here next week with Roberto Valenzuela discussing portrait retouching. And oh, nice. if you don't know Roberto, he's he's one of the premier portraitists of our time, and he does it all exceptionally well. Yeah. Um, and uh, and then we'll be back here probably the week after that, Rob, doing some more Lightroom Live. Yeah, we got to figure out our November. Yeah, we got to get our dates there. A couple holidays. And, uh, November eleventh, I will be in Portland, Oregon, at Pro Photo Supply. Uh, teaching uh, available light portraiture there, and I'd love to have you join us. It's a free class sponsored by Panasonic. I'll be in Tampa, Florida for The Grid on December 6th. Nice. So tune in there. Well, that'll be fun. I usually yeah. watch that. Oh, well, good. And then uh, we've got show season coming up. In, I mean, January is like tomorrow, so... Uh, let's not, let's not get goal. too far ahead of yeah. ourselves. Right? In Vegas in no time, man. Really. I still got I'm looking forward to Thanksgiving. Right? It's not talking about <laughs> January. Yeah, let's enjoy. Well, tomorrow is Halloween, and That's I've right. got I've got a little girl dressed up like a porcupine. Guitar, <laughs> so don't sit I'm on. Very excited. Yeah, exactly. Well, thanks for tuning in, everybody, and uh, we will catch you here next time. In the meantime, get out there and don't just take pictures, but make pictures. Yeah. Thanks for all the questions. Take care. Thanks very much. We'll see you, Rob. Bye.